Hi everyone, today I'm going to model a shear critical frame for you to validate your modeling software. By modeling the same frame, you can gauge the accuracy or inaccuracy of the software that you are using. That might give you confidence if you get good results or you might want to think of other options if you don't get good results. This is an experimental study done previously at the University of Toronto and load deflection response is available. I'm going to share this as an Excel file. You can download it and you can plot your load deflection result from the software that you are using that would give you, you know, the comparison that you are looking for. Before I start, I want to emphasize, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Please don't forget to like the video and these might enable us to record more videos for your professional development. I want to start by showing you the experimental program. So you see some of the testing crew. This is the finished frame. As you can see, frame is bolted to the strong floor. Professor Frank Vicchio, you can see some PhD students, they ended up being faculty members. Here you see Professor Shamim Sheikh, Professor Christopoulos, as well as Professor Vicchio with the lab technician John, Michael Collins, Paul Gowro, University of Toronto faculty at that time. You can see graduate students watching the testing. This must be a critical stage something is failing or the frame is about to fail and yes you see this is Kinwin Duyong who conducted this study who was the master's student you can download his thesis I'm going to put a link you can download his American Concrete Institute journal reversed cycles applied shear cracks is not a single direction but you know there is also other cracking so this is pretty the end of the experimental study again Kinwin Duyong this is myself I'm helping with phase two this is after retrofitting the frame which is is not part of this video see this is the retrofit they use fiber wraps let's see what Kinwin is doing right now and what he wants to tell you before I start the technical part of this video greetings from London England where I've been a structural engineer here for more than a decade my name is KV Duong and I am the creator of this reinforced concrete frame that you are about to model and analyze I made this frame as part of my master's thesis at U of T back in 2004 and 2005. I take great pride and joy in creating this frame and I hope you find as much satisfaction and output from it as I did. For modeling this frame, I'm going to be using another University of Toronto software, Vector 5. You can download the basic version of this free of charge and you can use it for your studies as well. Distributed plasticity, it uses layer section approach, total load secant stiffness formulation, modified compression field theory. You can also download this and you can take a look at what it does. Uh, in order to use Vector 5, we need to create a structural analysis model for which we are going to be using Formworks Plus that would also come once you download Vector5 bundle. It would come with preprocessor, Formworks Plus, Vector5, and postprocessor Genes, which we are going to be using to visualize the results. Let's start from scratch. This is the basic version I'm using, Formworks Plus, developed at the University of Toronto here. So I'm picking Vector5. First of all, let's save this. That is important. I'm going to create cross sections nonlinear frames, rectangular section. 43. These ones, if you input zero, it's going to be using values which are applicable to many reinforced concrete systems. This software is only for reinforced concrete. That's the advantage. You don't have to do customizations. The only thing I want to change is the maximum aggregate size because it's a little bit low, 10. I think default number is 20. Do shear reinforcement modeling. You can pick from here or you can input the area. Number of vertical ties would be two it's a closed strap spacing 130 455 megapascal 583 192 400 ultimate which i calculated which is 130 input start of the strain hardening specified as 22.8 you can also input 23 which is fine this is going to be 455 auto plane reinforcement is the same as transverse reinforcement color we would like to use different colors for each section but this is a good starting color i'm adding this the next one is very important sectional modeling height and width 
should be input clear cover is 20 millimeter which is input here let's just generate and take a look how many layers 27 layers good enough the next would be main reinforcement definition number of bars we are putting four we are using number 20 it's already available distance from top would be 40 for the first layer i need to input 447 ultimate 131 strain hardening starting point is 17 the second layer would be the depth it would be 90 and i'm just going to say add we are done section 2 is very similar so what i'm going to be doing is to copy section 1 rename it as section 2 update it i want to change the color as well next i don't think there is going to be any change with that section this is the part which i want to change or delete so i'm deleting second layer i'm going to be deleting this one again keep saving it so i'm done with section two section three and four i should be very careful which one is which because one is flipped copy section one name it section three update one let's just pick a random color in terms of transverse reinforcement it's going to remain the same here i'm going to be deleting the third layer that's it section four would be same as section three but it would be mirror image i'm going to be copying this one renaming it as four update yes section three that is good next i don't think we changed anything here here i'm going to be deleting reinforcement too so pretty much done we have another final section copy section one rename this as five also give it a unique color update in terms of transverse reinforcement yes we have to change parameters because this is different input 71 and remember you are inputting for only one bar right this has two legs i'm making this zero really 300 you pick this if you don't know the properties we are not going to be using this drop down menu so if you are modeling something in your practice definitely go ahead use this one but since we have the full experimental results we should be using exactly what is measured update next we'll also change a little bit because clear cover has become 30 0 0.16 very light amount of shear reinforcement that is good 27 layers good recommended 30 which is good enough there is going to be some changes delete layer 2 delete this one also this is not 40 yeah this is 50 update now we are going to be sketching the frame we have to be careful with it that's why i created my hand sketch we are going to be using auto meshing with create regions from 0 to 0 to 0 to 1100 section 1 at this one at region and at the same time you will see that that is sketched here I cut this at that point. I wanted to consider development of the reinforcing bar. There is some additional reinforcement. It's fully developed because of the hook at the base, but this termination, it would take some distance for that bar to develop, which is approximately 600 millimeters. So I'm just ignoring the first 300 because development happens gradually. So at this point, only 50% is developed. So you would be conservative it would be a little bit unconservative if you go all the way to the tip because this is a perfectly bonded reinforcement approach if you do that you are assuming reinforcement 100 percent bonded at this termination point which is not true so there was a little bit of a typo with that coordinate so i changed it what i would like to do is to go up to 2300 member type or section type would be two which is added and i'm saying add region so i'm done you can see region one region two create a new region 2300 and i would go all the way to 3500 again i'm ignoring half of the development length would be section two add region create new region goes up to 4400 this is going to be section three add the beams create new region this is going to be starting from zero to 4400 and it would go to 1900 add region another region 
would be starting from 2300 another section 5 see the frame is almost done create new region so i'm going to start with 1900 this is section type one if you want uh, this is the same region we can go from here to there previously we did like two different segments but we can also cross that with a single member 4400 and now be careful because it's section type or we will double check that's an important point okay. so we added the final region we are saving it create mesh add mesh to structures support restraints and for that purpose you are going to be picking this menu xyz restrain get a window select those two nodes add next step would be load cases there is going to be two load cases the first one would be the pushover load case open the job file enable two load cases you know case one make it that's the main load case horizontal load second one make it gravity let's increase this by two millimeters vertical load would be constant and start with one 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 so nothing changing i'm not going to be changing anything else if you want to input some project information you can input that i'm picking case one and i'm coming here and the first one is nodal loads the second one is support displacement i'm going to be applying one millimeter displacement it's a pushover in a displacement controlled manner one window this one apply here you go select case number two i'm going to be applying point loads fy minus 420 kilonewtons again i'm going to be getting a window minus 420 apply we should be using some semi-rigid end offsets and program is doing it automatically at every beam column joint it's creating and using a different section type as you can see joint section types are different they are semi-rigid what I'm going to be doing is to apply the same logic into the first member which is inside the base which is a beam column joint for that reason what I did I copied section one made a section one joint and what I'm going to be doing would be doubling the reinforcement quantities just to protect that region you can generate it's going to double the numbers eight update so let's pick black so i'm going to be designing section one joint i'm going to be picking window and these are the two members i'm selecting design yes done and the next step would be to save files I'm saving job file I'm saving structure file and this is going to save two different load files save this one save that one and once you click this icon it's going to run vector 5 so you will see analysis running right now we got shear failure 38 and I'm going to be starting Genesis. there is an icon for post-processor genesis so i'm opening the job file which we just created you can see node numbers member numbers you can see section types you can see the length of each member using this menu what is cool about this program is even though it's a one-dimensional frame element it calculates results for each concrete layer and it renders it in two dimensions this is load stage one lateral displacement zero lateral displacement is two you can see load stage two convergence is excellent you can see delta x two millimeter you know you can push structures until failure this is why it's called pushover analysis change background color to white so you can see these are the crack widths you can show information these are the colors so you see the crack width information you can show next yielding you can also play this automatically this is the first yielding we got at load stage 12 and you can see the corresponding load 315 kilonewtons pretty good convergence I'm pushing this more and more and you can see ends are really suffering quite major cracks yes you got it this is very similar to the experimental result and let me show you so if you look at frame condition two ends are having major shear cracks and we got that in both beams we got the failure at this point and that would be probably one before 387 would be the failure load prediction for this frame you can definitely get more information if you want concrete stresses you can have this print you 
the concrete stress contours. So really the modeling is done using very simple line elements, but the results are as if a two dimensional continuum finite element has been performed. You can come here and you can see reinforcement stresses. Each element has a certain color. You can get quite a comprehensive information from the results menu. Of course, what we are interested in would be the load deflection response. Node 4 variable would be horizontal displacement and the other one would be reaction include data make this horizontal axis let's see the plot if we want to get the data you can create excel file but i'm just going to generate the data copying this one and i already created an excel file pasting the data this is good enough. You can plot displacement for load four. If we look at the failure load, load stage 50 is the one. I got the ratio 20%. The experimental plot is actually for net load. So there is a little bit of a process. So let's get displacement five because I need to calculate average displacement. You don't have to do this, but I want to finish this as it should be displacement five so because it's going to be average of displacement four and five five generate data i'm going to copy this and paste it here so what i'm going to be doing is to create average displacement and net load for the net load 78 so 17 percent which is pretty good for a shear critical structure, anything under 20% is pretty good estimation. Let's see what you would get. This is a nice validation study. I strongly recommend you model this using the software that you use and get the results. You can, of course, use Vector5 as well. I'm going to put the download link. That is the process of validating a nonlinear modeling software. Thank you very much for your attention. I appreciated you watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe, share the video, like it so that we can create more content for you. Thanks very much for your attention and I'll see you in the next video.